Lucy worked as a librarian and loved her job very much. One day, a handsome guy whose name was Rob came to her library. They had a brief conversation and he left 10 minutes later. Then, Lucy went to the reading room and noticed that the most expensive book was missing. Oh, no. She asked three visitors, What were you doing during the last 10 minutes? Rosie said that she had been doing her homework. Rick said, I was in the restroom when the theft happened. And Violet was looking through architecture magazines for her art project. Who stole the book? Rick. He started making excuses, although Lucy didn't even tell the visitors that the book was missing. Lucy exposed the thief, but Rick ran away. Lucy ran after him down the street. He decided to hide in a women's clothing store. When Lucy ran into the dressing room, she saw three pairs of feet. Can you help her find Rick? These feet are too big, and Rick's blue coat is on the floor. When Lucy caught Rick, he promised to return the book if she managed to crack his riddle. I'm easy to waste, and I'm unstoppable. What am I? A few minutes later, Lucy gave him her answer. Rick threw the book into her hands and ran away. What did she say? time. Lucy opened the book and immediately realized that it was fake. How? Take a look at the color and quality of the paper. It's white, while the original book was very old, and the paper was yellowish. Lucy came to the police station to tell them about the theft. She met three uniformed police officers, but one of them was a fake. Who? The third guy. Take a look at the wall. His portrait hangs on the board with wanted criminals. The police officers promised Lucy to start an investigation as soon as they take care of more serious crimes. But Lucy didn't want to waste time. She decided to do her own research. She went to a party for rich collectors of antiques. The guards refused to let her in because she didn't have an invitation. So, Lucy came up to three men in the parking lot nearby. They had invitations. Lucy's plan was to join one of them as a plus one guest. The guys wanted to impress Lucy and began to discuss their new cars. Josh said, I wanted my car to be special, so I bought this one. Liam said that since he was a beginner, he purchased a cheap used car. And Henry said that he bought a big car because he had a lot of friends. Lucy realized that one of the guys was lying. Who? Josh, the logo on his car key doesn't match the logo on his car. The guard recognized Lucy and refused to let her in again. But she didn't give up and walked around the building. She noticed a metal door. It was locked and required a 16-digit code. She found this note next to the door. 3, 2, 8, 5, 4, 1. Can you help Lucy crack the code? It's 2, 2, 2. Five 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 one 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 one. She literally needs to enter three twos, eight fives, and four ones. Finally, Lucy unlocked the door and entered the building. She saw two beautiful rooms. Suddenly, she met a scared waiter. She told Lucy that one of those rooms belonged to a vampire. Can you tell which room? This one, it has no windows at all. The party was awesome, great music and amazing people, but there was a thief among the guests. Can you guess who it was? This woman on the right is reaching for the man's pocket. Suddenly, Lucy met Rob, the handsome guy from the library. 
He invited her to dance. Lucy said, Okay, but first, you have to crack my riddle. No matter how little or how much you use me, you can change me every month. What am I? A few seconds later, Lucy and Rob were dancing together in the middle of the dance floor. So what did Rob answer? I'm a calendar. Lucy thought three collectors were suspicious, so she questioned them. Georgina said, Don't speak about books, please. I've gone broke recently. So I had to sell my entire book collection. Henry said, What do you think I am? I only buy antiques from official dealers. And Victor said, I fell in love with high technologies and got rid of all antiques in my house. Old stuff makes me sick. Who's lying? Victor, if he doesn't like antiques so much, why is he wearing a vintage vest and hat? The party host invited all the guests to the dining room. Lucy wanted to sit next to Rob. Georgina agreed to switch places if Lucy guessed her riddle. When you don't know what I am, then I am something. But when you know what I am, then I'm nothing. What am I? Have you guessed? It's a riddle. Waiters brought many dishes with delicious food. Suddenly, one lady exclaimed, I've lost my diamond earring. Can you help her find it? It's over there on the plate with cheese. Rob offered Lucy to play a game. Six glasses are standing in a line, but only the first three are filled with juice. The task is simple. Lucy can touch only one glass. Keep in mind that each full glass must be followed by an empty one. How would you solve this riddle? Take the second glass and pour the juice from it into the fifth glass. When the waiters served dessert and coffee, Lucy offered Rob this riddle. You have three empty cups and ten sugar cubes. You need to distribute these sugar cubes between the cups so that each of them has an odd number of cubes. Rob nailed it. What about you? You should put three cubes in the first cup, then put the second cup into the third cup, and put all the remaining seven cubes inside. Now, you have two cups, and each of them contains an odd number of sugar cubes. Lucy went to the ladies' room. Suddenly, she felt overwhelming weakness and fell asleep. Lucy woke up in a strange room without windows. There was no one else around. She could see only one exit, the door. But there were huge electric saws spinning in front of this door and blocking her path. Luckily, she found a control panel on the wall. But it was really confusing. One switch turned off the electric saws. One speeded them up, and one turned on rock music. One wrong move, and Lucy will stay in this room forever. Which switch should Lucy press to stop the electric saws? This button. When Lucy got out of the creepy room, she found herself on the roof of a skyscraper that was about to crumble. The only way out was to use one of the elevators. If she chose the first elevator, she'd fall hundreds of feet. Ice-cold water that could freeze any human was behind the second door. A super venomous tick was in the third elevator. And mutated mosquitoes were waiting for Lucy inside the fourth elevator. Just one bite could make her fall asleep forever. Which elevator should she choose? The third elevator. Even though the tick is venomous, she can easily crush it because it's small. When Lucy got out of the building, she saw a group of firefighters. She spotted a fake one among them immediately. Can you see him too? This guy over there. On Monday, Lucy went downstairs to see Rob, and this is what happened. 
But on Tuesday, she met Rob again, and he looked absolutely fine. How did Rob survive? He's an actor. They were shooting a movie. There's a shadow of a camera in the lower right corner. It was Lucy's first day off, and she went for a walk in the park. But suddenly, she received a text message from Rob. He asked her to meet him in the library. She used the car sharing app to get to the meeting spot, but the car refused to start. It demanded a password to make sure Lucy wasn't a robot. Lucy didn't know what to do, but the system gave her a hint. Soft, hairy, from door to door. I am the pet that always stays on the floor. Have you guessed the password? Carpet. When Lucy arrived at the library, Rob confessed that he had been involved in the book theft, all because the book contained a spell for traveling to parallel universes. He read the spell, and five portals appeared in the reading hall. Rob offered Lucy to go through one of the portals and have a walk. You can hear the street noise from the first portal. You can hear the birds singing from the second portal. You can hear leaves rustling from the third portal. There's a sound of rain behind the fourth portal, and you can hear waves from the fifth portal. Which portal did they choose? The third one. The only footprints on the floor lead to this portal. Rob and Lucy found themselves in front of a swamp. Angry wolves noticed them and began to chase the guys. Uh -oh. What should they do? Sprint through the swamp? Stay in one place and wait for help? Or walk slowly and try to step on the grass? Running is a bad idea. They'll immediately get pulled into the swamp. They also can't just stop and wait for help because the wolves are nearby. They should move slowly and use a stick to test the path. Grace has seven sons and each of them has a sister. How many children does Grace have in total? The answer is eight. I bet all the sons have the same sister, so seven sons plus one sister equals eight children. Stephen's family was away this weekend, but he was found unconscious outside his mansion. Investigators had three main suspects. All of them were in the house when it happened. The first person was Maya, but she claimed to be innocent. I was cleaning the house in the morning and I took a nap in the afternoon, she told the investigators. John, the butler, said, I was told to check the food inventory in the afternoon. And the last person to be interrogated was James, the driver. He claimed he'd been far away from the house that day. Yeah, I was driving the boss's children to a garden party. Which of these people do you think is guilty? It was James. All family members were away that weekend. So his alibi can't be true. What English word has the same pronunciation even after you take away two of its three letters? It's B. Phew, that one took some work. Look at these images and try to guess what's wrong. Duh! In the last picture, the woman is trying to eat soup with a fork. Like that would work. On a lazy Sunday afternoon, seven friends decided to go to the mall. Esme, Evelyn, and Elise grabbed a cup of coffee each, while Ava, Ella, and Emma decided to drink some refreshing soda. Using this logic, can you figure out if Esther chose to drink coffee or soda? Esther is drinking coffee. The secret is in the girl's name. Esme, Evelyn, Elise, and Esther all have two letters E in their names, just like the word coffee. There were four pairs in the basket and four people in the room. Each person took one pair. 
In the end, there was still one pair left in the basket. How is that possible? The last person took a pair that was still lying in the basket. Mary's birthday was coming up and she decided to treat herself to a relaxing day at the spa. During a massage, Mary dozed off. When she woke up, the money she had in her purse was missing. Oh no! Mary had three suspects. The cashier, Erica, claimed, I was having lunch in the back. Catherine, the masseuse, said, I went to the back of the store to get some extra oil. The last person was Monica. She was another customer. She said she hadn't seen anything and had just been waiting for her appointment. Can you tell which one is the culprit? The thief is Catherine. She must have waited for Mary to fall asleep and then took her things. Look at the money hidden behind the oils. Hey, it's time for a hair appointment to trim those split ends. But in this scenario, there are only two hairdressers in town who can cut your hair. This guy or this girl? Which one should you choose? The girl, of course. If there are only two hairdressers in town, that means they cut each other's hair. And judging by the haircut the guy gave the girl, it looks like he doesn't really know what he's doing. If a rooster lays an egg on top of this cabin, in which direction will it roll? Aha! Roosters don't lay eggs, so it wouldn't roll anywhere. The shopkeeper of an expensive skincare store called the police because someone had robbed his business. He didn't notice the culprit, but according to the security camera footage, there were three customers in the store at the time of the robbery. Police officers questioned each of them. Michael said he'd been buying some stuff for his pets. The second suspect, Kayla, was looking for ointments and some aloe vera gel. The last person, Rachel, told the interrogators she'd been busy looking for lotions. Can you tell who's lying? Michael is the culprit. The skincare store doesn't sell pet products. Duh. Peter is a rich man who owns a lot of expensive jewelry. One day, he woke up and noticed that all of it had been stolen. Uh oh. He called a private detective to solve this case. Peter's wife Carla was the first one to be interrogated. I was showering at the time, she said nervously. Bianca, the housekeeper who had been working for the family for years, was not in the house. She said, I was cleaning the garage. The last suspect was Barb, the house chef. I was making lunch for the family, she told the detective. Can you tell who stole the jewelry? It was Barb, of course. She claimed she was cooking lunch, but the crime happened at night. A man lives on the 80th floor of a high-rise building. On rainy days, he takes the elevator all the way up. But on sunny days, he only takes the elevator halfway to his floor. And then, he takes the stairs the rest of the way. Why does he do this? Well, my friends, it so happens that the man is short. Normally, he can only reach the 40th floor button. But on rainy days, he manages to push the 80th floor button with the help of his umbrella handle. Genius, huh? On a rainy day, Miranda decided to work from home. At one point, she went to the bathroom. But when she got back, she noticed that her cell phone and money had been stolen right in her own house during the day. There were three people in the house at the time. Her sister Beth claimed it wasn't her. I was still asleep at the time because I'd gone to bed late yesterday. Her other sister, Anna, said she'd been taking a stroll in the garden when it had happened. I was watching the night-scented orchid bloom. And lastly, there was Josh, Miranda's boyfriend. I've just got home for lunch, he said. What do you think? Which of these three suspects stole Miranda's money and cell phone?
Anna is the culprit, of course. Night-scented orchids only bloom at night, so she probably sneaked in and grabbed Miranda's things while the girl was away. A farmer rode into the village on Monday. He stayed in the village for four days and rode out on Monday. How is that possible? The farmer's horse is named Monday. I bet you didn't guess this one, did you? Uncle Ben's farm experienced a terrible downpour and all but 15 pigs were missing and couldn't be found. How many pigs are still in the barn? If you said 15, you got it right. So, there are three important rooms in a house. The first one is a library full of rare books. The second room stores piles of money and gold. And the third room has boxes full of expensive jewelry in it. In case of a fire emergency, in which room will the police try to extinguish the fire first? The correct answer is none. Police officers don't fight fire. That's the job of firefighters. Virginia accidentally sent an email to her boyfriend instead of her best friend. She didn't want her partner to see it, so she took his laptop while he was sleeping and tried to delete the message. The laptop required a password to unlock. Luckily, there was a post-it with a hint. History, three. Music, five. Book, two, three, one. Yellow, one. What's the passcode? Each number indicated the letter Virginia had to select in the corresponding word. The third letter in history is S. The fifth letter in music is C. The second, third, and first letters in book are O, O, and B. And the first letter in yellow is Y. The password is Scooby. That's all for today, folks. Hope your brain is good and functioning after all these sharp riddles. See you next time. Rose, Lily, and Jasmine enter a flower shop on Mother's Day to buy some flowers for their moms. One of them buys lilies, the second one, roses, and the third one, jasmines. It's funny, said the lady with roses. <laughs> we bought roses, jasmines, and lilies, but none of us bought the flowers matching her name. <laughs> Lily replies, whoa, you're right. Can you guess which kind of flowers each of the girls bought? We know that the lady who bought the roses isn't Rose, and she's not Lily either, because Lily replied to her words. So Jasmine bought roses, Rose bought lilies, and Lily bought jasmines. Bob also bought some flowers for his wife. All of the flowers he has are orchids, except two. All of the flowers he has are hibiscuses, except two. And all of the flowers he has are roses, except two. Can you guess how many flowers Bob has? Bob purchased only two flowers, neither of which are orchids, hibiscuses, or roses. At the end of his shift, the barista checks a tip jar. There are five coins inside the jar. Five people take these five coins home. However, one coin is still left in the jar. How can this be possible? Simple, the last person took the jar along with the coin. Therefore, one coin still remains in the jar. Three best friends participate in a bicycle race, but one of them is cheating. Can you guess who? The person in the middle. She rides an electric bike. Four people wake up on a deserted island. In a while, they get really hungry and go for a walk to find some food. Amy finds a bush with berries. Peter finds a closed can of beans. Fred finds this beautiful apple tree. And Nina discovers a hive full of honey. Only one of these options is safe. Can you decide which one? A creepy
sleepy cobra is hiding in the bush. The beans expired 10 years ago. Oh. It's not safe to take honey from the hive without a protective suit. So, apples are the safest option. It has 13 hearts, yet it's never alive. What is it? A pack of cards. I have three eyes and all are in a straight line. When my red eye opens, everything freezes. Ah. What am I? No. I'm a stoplight. I'm made of wood, but you can't saw me down. What am I? I'm sawdust. Wendy is trapped in a creepy castle. It has only two possible exits. The first door leads to a room constructed from magnifying glass. The blazing hot sun instantly fries anyone who enters. And there's a fire-breathing dragon waiting behind the second door. Can you help Wendy escape? She should wait until nighttime and go through the first door. Can you write the number 45 only using the number 4? Here's the correct way. Tim lives in an apartment building. He comes home in the evening and finds out that his car is wrecked. He also sees three neighbors standing nearby. Tim wants to find out who's guilty, so he questions them. Henry replies, I was just skating around the block. I didn't touch your car. Hmm. Will says, I was playing basketball with my friends. And Shelly replies, I've spent all day working in the coffee shop on the first floor of our building. Can you spot the liar? Hmm. Shelly, she said that she'd been visiting the coffee shop, but it's closed for good. Bella wants to rob an old lady's house. She approaches the door and sees that the door is opened. <laughs> Bella freaks out and runs away. Can you see what's wrong here? There's no hole for a key. There's a five-letter word that has three consonants, and they are all the same. Also, the word has two different vowels. There's something wrong associated with this word. Can you guess it? Error. Sam is a restaurant owner. He enters the space, and the waiter whispers to him, Sir, there's a famous millionaire eating lunch at one of the tables. Ooh. Sam looks around and sees these four persons. Can you guess who's rich? The first guy is wearing a fake Nike hoodie. This elegant woman has a fake Gucci bag. The third person is wearing torn shoes. And this lady is holding the keys from the brand new Ferrari parked behind the window. So, she's definitely not poor. Take a look at these nine letters. Can you form a nine letter word using these letters? Don't forget to use each letter. The word is mythology. What has lots of eyes but can't see? The correct answer is a potato. I'm the part of the bird that's not in the sky. I can swim in the ocean and yet remain dry. What am I? I'm a shadow. An electric train is traveling southwest at 95 miles per hour, and the wind is blowing northeast at 95 miles per hour. Can you guess which direction the smoke blows? There's no smoke with an electric train. What five-letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? The correct answer is short. 
The more of me here, the less you see. What am I? I'm darkness. What building has the most stories? Library, of course. Bob gets lost in the gym. He's wandering around and finds three doors leading outside. There are dangerous lions behind the first door. There's a giant pterodactyl breathing fire behind the second door. And behind the third door, there's a tank with hungry sharks. Nobody can cross this tank and stay alive. Which door should Bob choose to survive? To crack this riddle, Bob should remember that pterodactyls don't breathe fire. That's what dragons do. Also, pterodactyls went extinct many millions of years ago. So Bob should choose the second door. I'm tall when I'm young, and I'm short when I'm old. What am I? I'm a candle. There's a one-story house in which everything is pink. Pink walls, pink doors, pink furniture. Can you guess the color of the stairs? It's a one-story house. There are no stairs. I'm taken from a mine and shut up in a wooden case from which I'm never released. And yet I'm used by almost everybody. What am I? I'm a pencil lead. Miss Smith is a billionaire. She has three people living in her house with her. Adam, her reckless son, Peter, her noisy brother, Hello. and Sebastian, the loyal housekeeper. One day, Miss Smith finds this message written on her calendar. Can you help her spot the betrayer? Ooh. The circled numbers mean the months. It's her son, Adam. I can be long or I can be short. I can be grown and I can be bought. I can be painted or left bare. I can be round or a square. What am I? I'm your fingernails. Danny is a famous vampire hunter. He gets an invitation to a small town. There's a vampire living in this town, but nobody can catch this dangerous creature. Danny decides to look in the local restaurant. He asks the staff to show him security camera archives to check among the restaurant visitors over the years and soon identifies the vampire. Who's the vampire? There he is. Vampires don't age and also don't eat food. Danny takes a walk around the town and spots another creepy detail. Can you see it too? There's a zombie hiding over there. What about this location? Can you spot any zombies here? Hello, great job. Can you count the number of triangles in the given picture? What about this picture? How many triangles can you see? You can pause this video if you need extra time. There are 104 triangles in this picture. As a child, Laura adored rabbits. She grew up, became a private detective, and got herself a cute rabbit named Cinnabon. Once, she had to go on a business trip. She asked Sarah, her housekeeper, Annabelle, her cook, and Phoebe, her sister, to look after the animal. But when Laura came back, Cinnabon was gone, and all three women she had asked to look after her pet claimed they didn't know what had happened. 
Look at them attentively. Who is lying? It's the cook. See, it's Cinnabon's collar in her pocket. Well, Laura noticed that too. When Annabelle realized she had given herself away, she broke into a run. Laura dashed after her, but she couldn't catch up with the woman. Luckily, the girl noticed Annabelle run into a gym. She ran inside too. A security guard stopped her. Apparently, all members of this exclusive sport club were supposed to know a special passphrase to enter the facility. Laura was lucky to notice a note with a hint next to the door. Can you help Laura figure out the passphrase? That's for once in my life. And it was the correct answer. The guard let Laura through. The girl searched everywhere, but didn't find Annabelle. But wait, the showers. When she entered the bathroom, she realized there were three people taking a shower there. But a moment later, she noticed that one person only pretended to be cleaning themselves. Who was it? It's the person in the second cubicle. The water is running, but there's no foam. They don't use any soap or sponge. But, surprise, surprise, the person who pretended to be taking a shower wasn't Annabelle. Then where could the cook hide? Suddenly, Laura noticed a white sheet of paper on the floor. She picked it up. It said, Follow the white rabbit. Look around the room attentively and try to figure out where the girl should go. See those bunny ears on that door? Laura should probably try it. But there was a combination lock on the door. And is that a riddle next to it? Laura started reading. The code is a three-digit number. 682. One number here is correct and well-placed. 635. One number is correct but in the wrong place. 206. Two numbers are correct but in the wrong place. 738. Nothing here is correct. 780. One number is correct but in the wrong place. Can you help Laura figure out the code? From statements 4 and 5, we can understand that 0 is the correct number standing in the wrong place. 6 can't be the number we need, otherwise statements 1 and 2 would contradict each other. In this case, looking at statements 2 and 3, we can conclude that the correct numbers are 2, 5 and 0 and the code is 052 Laura opened the door and saw a long corridor it led her to a large room there she saw a man dressed in black he was sitting on a throne like chair holding Cinnabon well 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 here you are he said if you want to get your rabbit back you'll have to do something for me Laura had no choice but to agree you see, my wife Louisa disappeared during a performance she attended a week ago. Your task will be to find her. And the man gave Laura all the details. The girl questioned three witnesses. Dorothy said she had gone home right after the performance and hadn't noticed anything weird. Alina said that she had seen Louisa leave during the break with a tall blonde man. And Anna said that she'd been on the phone with her husband and hadn't seen where Louisa had gone. Who knows something about Louisa's whereabouts? Alina, look, during the intermission, she wasn't wearing her glasses. Neither did she have her lenses on. Look at how clumsily she moved. But then, how could she see Louisa leaving with a man? After Laura pressed Alina, the woman cracked. She admitted that she had seen some woman pulling Louisa away, but she was afraid to tell the truth since the woman seemed extremely unfriendly. Alina gave Laura a piece of paper the woman had dropped, but whatever was written there, it was a cipher. Can you help Laura crack it?
The note says, at the docks. When Laura got there, she saw three buildings. She understood she wouldn't have enough time to search all of them. She needed to choose the one where Louisa was kept, and fast. Can you help Laura? Look at the dark blue construction attentively. Next to the window, there's the word HELP scratched with some sharp object. After looking around the building, Laura found three keys. She needed to figure out which one of them fit the lock. Hurry up! Right, this is the key! The door opened, and Laura saw a woman sitting in the far corner. It was Louisa! She helped the woman to her feet, and they stumbled away. Soon, they noticed three taxis. Which car should they choose? The first one doesn't have a license plate. That's suspicious. And the driver of the second taxi is the very woman who took Louisa away a week ago. She's wearing a fake mustache and a baseball cap, pretending to be a man. Laura and Louisa should choose the third taxi. But luck wasn't on their side that evening. The car broke down before they could get to Louisa's husband. They had to walk. There were three paths in front of them. One led to a swamp. Toxic gases were floating all over the surface of the water. The second road was filled with poisonous plants. And over the third path, the air was swarming with agitated wasps. Which path should Laura and Louisa opt for? The second. At least the plants can't move. So if the women are careful, they'll be able to avoid touching them. Finally, they arrived at Louisa's house. Once the man in black saw his wife, he hugged her and turned to Laura. I'm so sorry for using such methods, but I was getting desperate. I can't tell you why, but I had to keep her disappearance under wraps. That's why I chose to involve you. Thank you. I want to give something to you. But to get it, you'll need to crack this riddle. An electronics store owner came to work one day and saw that his safe was open. His money was nowhere to be found. He called the police. When a detective arrived, the store owner explained that the key to his safe was on the same keychain as the keys from his truck. Two of his employees, Andrew and Ryan, used the truck and had access to all the keys, but the men had always returned them. The detective questioned the drivers. Someone broke into your boss's safe yesterday. What do you know about this incident? Andrew said, I didn't copy the key. I wouldn't even know which one to copy. And Ryan said, I've been working here for three months and have never entered the boss's office yet. The detective understood who the thief was right away. Can you figure it out? Andrew stole the money. The detective didn't say how the criminal had opened the safe. Then how did Andrew know it? Laura got the answer right. The man handed her Cinnabon and a brand new smartphone but it was protected by a password. When Laura tried to unlock the phone, that's what she saw. Write backward all the numbers. That sounded like a tough task. Luckily, Laura was very smart. She didn't need much time to write the correct answer and unblock the gadget. So what was the password? S-R-E-B-M-U-N E-H-T-L-L-A. That's all the numbers written backwards. She couldn't believe her eyes. She'd been dreaming of this all her life. But to get it, she'd have to set off on a very unusual journey. Sarah was in her hotel room when she heard a knock on the door. When she looked through the people, she saw a man standing outside. Sorry for bothering you. I'm the hotel manager, he said. Our database has crashed, and I need to recheck some information. Sarah said she would be back in a moment, got away from the door, and called the hotel security. She said there is a man trying to rob her. How did she know?
Look at the man's name tag. It's a female name. He's not the real hotel manager. When Anna got to school, she noticed that her friend Joan was very upset. It was just the beginning of the day, but someone had already stolen her backpack. Joan left the classroom to go to the bathroom, and at that moment, someone must have got inside and stolen her things. Anna started her own investigation. Jenna from the robotics lab said she'd been fixing a robot that morning. Kate from the cheerleading squad had just begun her practice. And James said he'd spent three hours trying to solve a math problem and was now exhausted. Anna knew right away who had taken the backpack. Can you figure it out? It was James. The school day had just started. How could he have been there for three hours already? On a beautiful morning, Michael and Christina went on a hike. At some point, they saw a river they had to cross. Both of them needed to get to the other side. However, the boat could only make one trip back and forth and take one of them at a time. Still, both of them managed to get across. How? That's easy. They both went on a hike on the same day, but they weren't together. So they arrived at the river at the same time, but they were on the opposite banks. So after the boat took Christina to the other side of the river, Michael managed to get to the opposite bank too. At a party, there were nine candies in a box. Nine people took nine candies, but one candy was still in the box. How could that be possible? The last person took the candy that was still in the box. When the day after tomorrow becomes yesterday, then today will be as far from Sunday as the day it was today when the day before yesterday was tomorrow. Which day is it? It's Sunday. Look, the day after tomorrow becomes yesterday on Wednesday. The day before yesterday was tomorrow on Thursday. And Wednesday and Thursday are equally far from Sunday. Susanna was walking down the street when she saw a dog. It looked like the dog had just run away, so she picked it up and started searching for its owner. She walked into a co-working space. There were three people there. Susanna knew immediately who the owner was. How did she figure it out? Look at the guy in the middle. He's sitting on top of a dog leash. It was Brian's birthday, and he organized a game for his friends. He placed two cards, one yellow and one red, inside a box. The rule said that if a person picked the red card, they would win $7,000. But if they picked the yellow card, they would have to pay $700. Nobody knew that Brian had lied. He'd put two yellow cards inside the box instead of one red and one yellow. Brian's friend Sandra watched her friends lose the game one by one. But when it was Sandra's turn, she won $7,000. How? When it was her turn, she picked one of the yellow cards, not showing it to anyone. Then she picked the remaining card, which was also yellow, and showed it to her friends. Brian had to admit that the first card she'd drawn and hidden was red. Otherwise, all his friends would know he was a liar. Way to go, Sandra. Amy has to escape from a high security room, but to do so, she has to solve a riddle. There are two strings in the room, and the only information she has is that each string takes exactly one hour to burn. She needs to time exactly 45 minutes with the help of the strings. How can she do it? Amy should light both ends of the first string and one end of the second string. In 30 minutes, the first string will burn completely since it'll burn twice faster with both ends on fire. Then, she should light the second end of the second string. At that time, the second string will have 30 minutes left to burn. But by lighting its other end, Amy will make it burn in 15 minutes. Voila! 
45 minutes measured. On January 1st, Devin called the police to report a crime. He said he'd gone to his neighbor's New Year's Eve party the night before. And while he was away, someone broke into his house and stole his laptop and other valuables. When the police asked about the party, Devin said it had been great. There was good food and string lights were shining brightly and beautifully. Devin added that his neighbor could have been the one to steal his things. Maybe he snuck inside the house when Devin was at his place, having fun. The police officer went to interrogate Devin's neighbor, Tom. But as soon as Tom opened the door, the officer knew he wasn't guilty. Devin was lying. How did he understand this? Look at the string lights on the tree. They're missing three bulbs. It means they couldn't be working the night before. Devin is lying. Matthew was on an expedition to the South Pole. He had been exploring the area for days when a storm began. Looking for shelter, he managed to find two caves. In the first cave, there was a very hungry looking polar bear. In the second cave, the air was filled with toxic gas. Which cave should he choose? The first cave. Polar bears don't live at the South Pole. Jerry has an apple tree. The number of apples on his tree doubles every week. 30 weeks later, the tree is completely covered in fruit. Can you guess how many weeks the tree will need to become covered in oranges? Oranges don't grow on apple trees, but if I asked you about apples, the answer would be 29 weeks because, as we know, the number of apples doubles every week. Nobody has ever walked this way. What way is it? The Milky Way Dave was held in a 150-foot high tower of an ancient castle. In his cell, there was nothing other than a pair of scissors and a 75-foot long rope. Despite this, when the guards came to check on him the next morning, they saw he had managed to escape. How did he do it? He cut the rope in the middle, but rather than cutting it across, he cut it along. Then, he tied both pieces of the rope together and safely got down to the ground. Genius, huh? On the outskirts of the town, there was a haunted house. A group of friends decided to check it out. They went there at night, but as soon as they got there, one of the friends, John, refused to go inside and tried to stop the others. But they just laughed at him and went inside, leaving him behind. There were several terrible crashing sounds coming from the house. And then everything went still. John never saw his friends again. How did John understand that there was something seriously wrong with the house? John was very attentive. He noticed that there were lots of footprints leading towards the house, but none going away. Rachel was in her office when security called her, saying there was a robber in the building and he was trying to escape. She ran to the elevators to get outside. But two elevators arrived at the same time. In each of them, there was a man that looked suspicious and could be the robber. How can Rachel understand which elevator is safe to take? The one that's going up. If the robber is trying to get out of the building, his elevator will be going down. So Rachel should take the one going up. 